How are you guys doing? Kevin here. And if it's your first time on this channel of visiting, um, we make videos here related to uh, personality psychology. So looking at MBTI union, psych um, union typology, um, we make videos about high sensitivity, particularly as it shows up in uh, males. And uh, also some mental health, <laughs> mental health topics. Um, so if those types of topics interest you, um, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell uh, to stay notified of future videos. And uh, I also hope you guys are enjoying my new mic setup I have here. Hopefully the audio quality is uh, noticeably better, but we'll see. Um, the next is obviously the video quality, but that'll be a bit uh, further down the road. But um, in this video, I want to kind of just talk um, about something on more of a general level um, because, you know, in light of kind of what's been going on lately in the world, um, you know, particularly recent events where um, people stormed the U.S. Capitol and, and just thinking about the last, you know, year in terms of just in general across the world with the pandemic and, you know, division issues in the United States. And, you know, I live in Canada, so I don't um, I'm not directly exposed to. Uh, what's going on in the United States, but I'm definitely well aware um, as their news tends to show up here. Um, so with all that stuff and how tumultuous a, of a year 2020 was, you know, I'm just thinking, um, you know, we're really in need of some sort of restorative order and some sort of change in um, on a more grand scale in society, you know, um, I, I watched recently um, the documentary that many of you guys I'm sure have heard of um, called uh, The Social Dilemma. And that document documentary on Netflix um, talks a lot about um, kind of really exposes our addiction to social media and, and, and kind of the mechanisms at play in terms of, you know, these big tech companies like Facebook and Twitter and how they really work to... Um, keep their viewers coming back to the platform over and over again and really using people's data. And, and, you know, we've heard of AI, we've heard of all these things, but really using all that data to personalize everyone's experience according to their own kind of beliefs and interests. Now, the main thing that stuck out of, at me um, after watching this documentary, aside from my own addiction to social media, which I'm getting better at, um, the, the main thing that stuck out was that these big tech companies kind of, they, they show everyone a different version of the news. Um, and it's really based on your own kind of interests and hobbies. And essentially, like, let's say as an example, right, let's say you have someone who's um, leans like a Republican who leans who's right wing and leans to the right um, of the political scale. So instead of maybe showing them, you know, some posts and some stories and ads that are related to maybe a different mode of thinking, kind of a more balanced mode of thinking, um, maybe showing them kind of a, a left wing kind of centric type of ad that maybe shows them, exposes them to a different perspective. Um, they're just being shown more and more and more of the things they already believe and that support their own values. Um, and on the flip side, you have someone who's maybe a Democrat or left wing, and they're being shown just more and more and more posts and ads that fuel their own values and beliefs. Now, the problem with this is, and I'm sure we have starting to see this in the United States and, and just, you know, even in, 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 in the way different people have responded to the pandemic and, and, and their views of whether masks are good or masks are not good, freedom's good, um, is, is what we get is we have um, a bunch of people who are getting fed different versions of the story. Um, and it's very problematic because it really promotes division and it promotes a society where we have two sides and we have all these sides and these, these things separating us as human beings. Um, and it's sad because... It isn't necessarily a natural thing necessarily because this is all kind of at the works of people in big tech um, and, co and large companies like Facebook and Twitter. And, you know, YouTube is one of them, of course. And, you know, I often, you know, I encourage you to take even what I'm saying here with a grain of salt and, and make your own opinion on the matter. But, you know, it's very problematic, I think, that um, these companies have such a stranglehold on um, kind of our psychology and 
and how we react to things. Um, and and I, I want to tie, the, the second part of this video is I want to tie that into MBTI and kind of why I do what I do with this channel and, you know, why a lot of people, I think, who are into personality psychology um, and even make videos on high sensitivity and things like that, how all these things play into um, addressing these issues um, and, cr and hopefully creating some kind of restorative order in the future because, um, you know, something has to change, I think, um, you know, and, and in terms of that social dilemma issue, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the, the documentary kind of ended off with them saying that, you know, we kind of need the government to step in and impose some kind of restriction on these big tech, co big tech companies so that their profit ceiling is not as high because, you know, when the prop, when there's no profit ceiling, they know that creating more division actually creates more money, you know, because people are just going to get shown more and more ads that are kind of relevant to their current beliefs and interests. And that's going to just help, you know, bring those people back to the platforms like Facebook and Twitter, right? As opposed to maybe balancing that with challenging people on their beliefs and, and getting challenging people to think, um, to see the other side and, and understand the other perspective and really kind of create more of a compassionate you unifying type of landscape than one that's more divi divisive and um you know encourages profit first and you know you know whatever we have to do to make the most money and you know businesses are starting to get away from that where they can with like social responsibility initiatives and things like that but it's we're not there yet we we have to keep going with this and and now how this ties into personality psychology and what I do you know i think that you know, with MBTI, right, um, the whole purpose of learning about personality psychology, you know, some people will just take the test and they'll be done with it, right? Like, oh, great, I'm this. It's kind of like, a, um, you know, you share your test result with your friends and, oh, it's great. Um, but there's a deeper level to this because if you really go deep into union psychology and, you know, uh, typology and personality type, what you're doing is you're really understanding the way all 16 variations of human beings um, behave in terms of their general patterns and being able to recognize where their their weaknesses are, you know, where their strengths are, you know, where, where their areas of growth are, you know, how we can relate to those personality types better. You know, I'm already realizing things about my own family members um, who some of them are SJs, for example. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of understanding kind of why they do what they do. You know, their different habits, their different ways of of, of being and also understanding how my own ways of being as an NF type uh, really differ a lot from theirs. Um, and, you know, that's totally okay, right? Um, the whole purpose is so that we can kind of become less critical of other people, less less judgmental of other people who may think differently um, because they have different um, portions of their personality that are more... Um, salient and prevalent in the way they conduct themselves like it's important to understand for example that an fe user is gonna you know really value social norms and hierarchies and 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 rules and um just you know the greater collective ways of 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 um you know seeing people in the world differently than an fi user would where they're going to be more in touch with their own kind of individual subjective um, way of feeling and thinking and relating to other people. So it's important to kind of understand that in, in a person. If, and if you don't understand maybe that an FI user has that tendency, you may label them as selfish or you may label them as, you know, not, you know, really supporting the greater good. And the same with like, let's say an intuitive thinker um, who may have that kind of view with the pandemic, let's say, where they, they're kind of very into the science, like what the science says, the scientific data, you know, looking very closely at statistics. And they may say that, oh, because the death rate of the virus is very low, um, that there's no reason why we can't just, um, you know, continue functioning in society and, you know, have all businesses open and have, you know, business as usual in terms of our daily lives. But that's obviously a very different perspective than someone who may really value again you know doing the right thing and having that social order in place and you know being able to really you know um you know look after their loved ones as much as they possibly can um and so these are important things to keep in mind and i think it would do the world very good if um 
you know, personality type um, was was more um, uh, viewed as normalized in society or a little bit more um, integrated into the education system and into workplaces and into schools and into really, um, you know, helping people um, utilize this tool and stop maybe viewing it as a pseudoscience. Um, I know there's certain personality tests like the big five that are sci psychologically verified and, and considered scientific, but things like MBTI are still not quite viewed the same way. Um, you know, guys like like Dario Nardi are, are at least, you know, working to help kind of connect um, these metaphysical things like, like MBTI to more objective, you know, physical things like neuroscience and what's going on in the brain, which is great. Um, but, you know, it's time that we start, you know, viewing psychological type more seriously. Um, and then, you know, I also talk about, you know, highly sensitive people on, on my channel and, you know, especially in men. And I think that um, those traits, it's about time that some of them develop a little bit of a higher importance in society in both men and women and that they're more they're more valued i think or at least more recognized you know it's not that people are all constantly getting shot down for behaving in these traits but in terms of what we value on a larger scale in society like like do we need to go all in on profit a hundred percent or can we maybe balance that a little bit by maybe having you know a bit more compassion a bit more recognition of you know, kind of our actions and the consequences of them. Like, like, you know, I know they make the climate change argument and stuff like that. Like, like, do we need to go all in on, you know, production, 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 industry, 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 or can we kind of tone it back a little bit in favor of, you know, maybe being a, a bit more responsible with the types of fuel emissions we have, or, you know, the way that, um, you know, we work, let's say, you know, not having to commute all the time, you know, things like that. Um, you know, I think those type of things can play a role and HSPs are very much, um, I think, big players in that type of transformation if it were to happen in society. Um, you know, with bringing traits like, 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 you know, intuition and being able to see the future and, and using their, their deep thinking skills and creativity to really craft some potential. Um, I think even tangible solutions, I know I'm an idealist here a little bit with some of the things I'm saying, but, you know, I think there are ways that we can, you know, develop tangible solutions that could really help and kind of challenge the way things are currently working in society and challenge the way people relate to each other. Um, and I think that um, those are very critical things um, that we have to kind of start to consider. And that's why, you know, I think with these videos, you know, the more publicity I can generate around talking about these types of topics and traits, you know, that's only going to help at least, at least increase the exposure of these types of ideas. And then, you know, from there, the society can kind of decide, you know, what, what will change or what won't, but we've already seen so much social change. I think in the last 10 years, um, and, and, you know, the way that, you know, you know, they, they, they talk about like diversity and feminism and all these things. And there's only going to be more types of um, uh, things coming up in terms of ways that we can kind of, um, I guess, tweak society and, and maybe challenge some of the more um, traditional ways that things have always been done. Um, and I think everything should be questioned and challenged and really see what holds up. Um, and we need to challenge our own beliefs and, you know, really question for ourselves, you know, what, what makes sense and what doesn't. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, let me know down below guys, you know, what, what, what kind of solutions come to mind for you? Um, maybe you're an, you're an idealist watching like an NF personality type, and maybe you have ideas for what a better future and a better society would look like. Um, so put those down below and let me know, like, what, what would you do? Like, like, even thinking from a practical level, you know, I know idealists sometimes get that rep of just being airy-fairy or kind of a pie-in-the-sky personality type, um, where they're just kind of very metaphysical and not really coming up with any sort of concrete solutions. But I think we're more than capable of that, especially if we harness, like, our inferior function um, and our lower functions, like our S-I-T-E, and really combine that with something like, like N-E um, or N-I. I think that can really, you know... Um, allow us to make a transformations in the world. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. And um, that's about it. So until next time, uh, have a good one. And if you enjoyed the video, of course, um, leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, consider hitting the, su the subscribe button and, and clicking the bell beside it to stay notified of future videos. So until next time, guys, uh, I'll see you in the next one.